In this example, we're going to be discussing problem number 9.34 from the book. This is on page 344. And I'm going to walk through the hypothesis testing process for this problem. And notice in 9.34, uh, it refers back to another problem from chapter 3, but we're just going to assume that we know what that means. Um, basically, we're looking at the data from a processing plant that fills tea bags. And we're concerned about the weight of the tea in the individual bags. Um, the file contains the data. Um, we have a sample of size 50 and as we read through this we get to A which says is there evidence that the mean amount of tea per bag is different from 5.5 grams? Use alpha equals 0 0.01. Now in this case it doesn't make a clear claim in the business model which is where we start with hypothesis testing but it does reference a type of measurement the mean weight and so I can start in that sense from that point so really we're looking at the mean mean weight okay and you'll notice that since there's no claim we can go straight to the hypothesis it says, is there evidence that the mean amount of tea per bag is different from 5.5 grams? So I'm just going to write mu different, which means not equal to 5.5 grams. Okay, just looking at this, I can probably write my hypotheses, which is the next step. This would be the alternative hypothesis because it does not include the equal sign. The the null hypothesis, which is the opposite of the alternative, would be mu equals 5.5 grams. Okay, so those are my hypotheses. The next step is to determine what is the distribution used in this case. Since I'm referring means, referring to means here, the mean weight, it's either going to be a T or a Z. So I need to know if I know the population standard deviation or not. I look at the problem. I'm not told anywhere in this problem what the population standard deviation is. So I could write that sigma is unknown. Therefore, this is going to be a t test, or it comes from a t distribution. Okay, so we've defined the null. We determine the appropriate sampling distribution, which is the mean. And uh, next, we need to draw the rough graph of what this looks like. You'll notice that since this is a not equals to sign in the, in the alternative hypothesis, it's a two-tailed test. So I'm just going to draw a rough graph of the distribution with two tails being shaded in to show that this is a two-tailed test. Okay, and since it's a t-test, I need to know some other information about the problem. Um, the next step actually says choose a significance level and a sample size. Well, that's given to us. The sample size is 50, so we'll say n equals 50, and we know that alpha, we're supposed to use an alpha of 0 0.01, as indicated by the statement of the problem. So with this information, we can get the critical values necessary to complete the graph if we want to define the rejection regions, which we do. So it's a t-test. N is equal to 50. Alpha is 0 0.01. That means degrees of freedom in the t-test is going to be 49. So we'll remember that as we get the critical values of the rejection region. Okay, so I'm going to skip now to mini tab. In Minitab, you'll notice I already uploaded the data here. We're not going to use that to get the critical values, but I'm going to use the probability distribution plot to get critical values. New probability. The distribution I want to choose is the T distribution, where degrees of freedom is 49. The shaded area, since this is a two tailed test, I choose both tails with probability 
selected and I input the alpha value which is 0 0.01 in this problem and I hit OK and this gives me the critical values automatically. You'll see that I've got the T distribution drawn here and values shaded on the right and the left which are half of 0 0.01 and my critical values are given 2.68 uh, and negative 2.68 so that's what I need to move on so moving on I know that this value is going to be negative 2.68 and this value is going to be positive 2.68 and so I've got my T values my T crit values as we call them and the next step now that I've chosen a significance level and n, I've quantified the rejection and non-rejection regions. I've even drawn the rough graph so I know that I'm looking at the right places. The next is just to use the statistics from the sample, which is given in the file tbags. We're going to use those statistics to test these hypotheses right here. Okay, we want to know which one are we going to assume at the end based on the sample that we've taken okay so let's go to mini tab and we're going to do the calculation of the statistics necessary to complete our hypothesis test in fact mini tab will do the complete test for us we just have to interpret the results so you'll notice the data here should be 50 points of data looks like that's what we have we're going to go to stat, go to basic statistics, and we know it's a t-distribution because we verified that during the course of our hypothesis testing procedure. I'm going to choose one sample t. This is similar to chapter 8 where we were building confidence intervals. Instead, we're going to create hypothesis test results. So samples are in columns. In this example, we got the data instead of a summary of the data. So I'm going to double click on the column for samples and columns. I want to choose perform hypothesis test. The hypothesized mean, if you remember, is 5.5. And uh, it might be good to include some graphs, maybe a, a box plot of the data. Also, we're going to click on options because our confidence level is 1 minus alpha and our alpha was 0 0.01 so we need to change this confidence level to 99.0 and our, our alternative is that the mean is not equal to that value so it's a two-tailed test that's what that means click OK I click OK again and you see our box plot right here with some labels on it so that's useful to kind of understand what's happening I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to look at the variable n is 50 the mean is 5.5 the standard deviation is 0 0.10 um, it builds a confidence interval for us it gives us our t statistic this value is what we compare with our critical values in our first example so if I move this over a little bit, we can see if I'm going to plot this t equals 0 0.09 on my graph here, you'll notice that this is 0. 0 0.09 is very close to 0, so this is where my t stat is. And my t stat is in the non-rejection region. And so using that procedure I know that I don't have evidence to reject the null hypothesis I can say do not reject h sub 0 now in the business sense to end I would say there is not enough data or I should say not enough evidence to conclude the mean weight is 
is different than 5.5. That's how we would, uh, the mean weight is different than 5.5 grams per tea bag. We want to be very clear the question that we're answering. And so that's basically walking through the hypothesis testing process. Okay? We defined hypotheses. We decided on the type of distribution we were using. We drew the graph. We computed the rejection regions. We computed the data using Minitab over here. Once we had the data, we plotted it on the graph. We could have also used the p-value approach, which I'll use in my next example. But uh, either way, we would come to the same conclusion that we don't have enough evidence to reject h sub 0. So there, and the business answer is the last part that we end on. There is not enough evidence to conclude the mean weight is different than 5.5 grams per tea bag. And we're done.